Yo, welcome back guys. So today's video, I'm gonna sort of potentially blow something up with the tester. Previous videos were used, which is the um, Quinetic, no, Kinetic switches. So Quinetic is the brand of Kinetic switches. This NRJ is what we've been using. We've used local wholesaler for years. Uh, this is the stuff that we use, which is a Kinetic light switch. So to any guys that don't know, you have the switch, the receiver, and your lamp end. The power goes into the receiver, and then the load side goes out to the lamp. You wire this up wirelessly to the switch. The switch is not connected to anything, it's just sticky padded to the wall. Uh, that allows you to do like extra sockets, extra switches some places, extra light switch next to the bed, or we've done rewires to people's houses where they don't want any damage on lighting. We've just ran these in. We've done a big box with the receivers, hidden away and accessible, all labeled up. Uh, I'll put a picture up here that we've done previously on the rewire. I've never, ever, ever had a problem but when we do do testing, people have asked us on videos previously, how do you do insulation resistance testing on it? So for us previously in the past, any smart devices that Sparks would know, you can't really insulation resistance test. An insulation resistance test is when you pump 240 or 500 volts up through each conductor, so live and neutral, live and earth, neutral and earth, CPC, whatever you want to call it. This, connect, this then detects whether or not there's any break, the breakdown in the insulation, any cables are widening correctly, or any cables are literally dead short. For the doing the test, most of the time, if it's over, well, our tester would say 999, which is not connected at all. It's a clear path. There's no conductors that are connected to each other. But if you were to test it with a smart switch or a USB double socket, um, you'll actually find out that it says it's connected ever so slightly, but by insulation resistance above 240 volts to 500, you would actually damage the appliance, so manufacturers say. So this is what I'm gonna test here today. I bought a new switch, which is actually a double one by accident. I've got a receiver, I've got our LED lamp. And I've also told as well that when you do insulation resistance tests on LEDs itself, so if we have a lot of built-in down lights, when we do do testing, especially the ICRs, we will do our insulation resistance IR test. Uh, we will combine live and neutral together and then do it down the earth. This then will then break and damage any of our uh, appliances throughout. And the reason we do this as well, insulation resistance testing, to anyone out there who's not Spark, we need to test to make sure that nothing's connected because this will then cause nuisance stripping on our RCDs, uh, dead shorts if we have live neutral or live and earth together, um, which will just trip out your fuse board, your MCBs, your RCDs, your fuse wire, whatever you've got protecting your wiring. This is why the test is done. So I'm going to chuck 500 volts down this today. I'm going to show you how to pair this up. I've already wired it in on my delicious board here. We've got the tester. So simple one with this. Hold it down for four seconds. Wait till there's a red light, which is always under my finger. Press the switch once. That's now paired. And I think I've got a broken LED. Two seconds. Sorry, that one's been clattering around in the van for about a year. Right. This is one I had a job off a job the other day. So we can see that's on. That's working. It's very, very simple to pair. These are also smart switches, so you can connect, connect them to Alexa, Google Home, your phones. You can get dimmable versions. There's loads of different bits. But I've read the instructions. And to my very small dyslexic knowledge from reading, I can't see anywhere it says do not 500 volt it. I can't see anywhere. So what we're gonna do on the tester is my Mega 1711. We'll do it on the 500 volts to start with, which really isn't gonna do much. And then we will test it again. And then we'll go onto the 500, give that a test. We'll do this all without the lamp in. I'm gonna try and find see if we've got an LED lamp somewhere that I can put in place. If not, we will just test the lamp separately to see if a 500 volt does damage LEDs as well. So this is me testing it. This isn't scientific or anything, so don't take this for more gospel, but I'm interested to see what happens if we do do this. Right, let's try 250, 240, 250. I'll take the lamp out. It's one of them energy saving coil horrible ones. Apparently it's five watt. It's not. Right, live and neutral. See, that on there saying it's connected because of the smart switch, hence why we link it through. Uh, because of all the electronic devices in here and the bits and the resistors and the capacitors or whatever's in it, couldn't tell you. Well, ask Dave Savory. He will know. Um, this saying it's dead short, really. 0.01 mega ohms, that's a dead short, really. Um, so, 
I'll wire it back in, let's give it a test, and then I'll switch it back over, put the ball back in, and we'll try 500 volts. All right, on, let's give it a go. No drama, no issue, on and off. I'll switch back over, and a lot of people say as well, with smart switches, if you have, once you've paired this, if you have a power cut or the power gets turned off the fuse board, do you have to repair them? To my knowledge, not the case on smart, on, you know, Alexa or anything like that, but normally with a simple manual pair like this, no, the power can be off for a, quite a long time. I don't know an exact time, whether or not it unpairs after a certain amount of time, but once this switch is set up with this receiver, it's linked together to, to my eyes for life. No matter if it's on and off, it creates a code between itself. This runs off radio signals. So the switch itself, if you don't know, inside a kinetic light switch, it doesn't have a battery, so that's why you can put it wherever you want. It uses your kinetic energy from pushing it as a push motion, turns it into a radio signal, which goes to the receiver, so that's how they work. So I do 500 volts and we'll see how it goes. Right, lamps out, they're connected up, let's do it to 500 and see how we get on. Obviously, dead short again, which we knew. Right, let's stop that. We'll reconnect it again. And then after that, we'll have a go at testing this and I'll get another lamp out and we'll try that. Right, moment of truth, let's give it a go. That's on, power's back on, lamp's in. Done. You're welcome. So, from one test, if you accidentally, accidentally do an IR test, 500 volts through a smart switch, I'd say a smart switch, a kinetic switch. I will at some point test a smart switch uh, in here and equally as well, I wanna do some USB stuff, but I need to buy a proper USB tester which I don't have other than just plugging a lamp in or something on batteries and charge. So let me know below if you want to see that. Smart switches, proper smart switches, um, USB sockets, that sort of thing. And I will do the same sort of test and we can work it out. But if you are going to do an IR test at 500 volts and you don't realise one of these is in the house, one go by looks to be ain't going to break it. I'd like to see how many times if we were to do it continuously or to leave the 500 load on it for a period of a couple of minutes, see what would happen. But really, in a testing scenario in the house, you wouldn't hold the button on for more than a couple of seconds. It would pump the 500 volts, you would get the reading, you would release the button, and that's it. It hasn't damaged it. Let's have a quick go with the lamp and see how that gets on. Just went to the depths of the van and found this. And this one works. So what I will do, I'll put it in this lamp holder. This is a, oh, it's everything scrubbed out, 6.5 watt. Obviously this is going to tell me, it should tell me it's a dead short again because of all the components inside. 0.32, we'll hold that on for a few seconds. Take it off. Bye. It still works. Ugh. Let me just try, because this actually goes up to a thousand. Let me try a thousand. Because to my knowledge, if you do it with any LEDs, this is meant to break. But this is obviously, uh, excuse me. It's just flashing at me saying a thousand volts. Oh, it's working now. It's got this flicker, I don't know you can see that because the camera, the lights. Right, so that was pumping some juice through it. It still works again. So, from all the stuff I've been told in the past, you shouldn't be allowed to do this, it will break it. But when we do our tests, if we can't remove lamps, if we can't remove neons, especially within switches, uh, USB sockets, one or two we can easily remove. We can put some blocks across it just to connect it through. But if there's a modern house that has USB sockets everywhere and smart switches, the only way I can get around and most of you guys will get around is by linking live and neutral together and connecting it down the CPC. So you've got a ring through that way. I'll find out if we've got any trip in between on our RCD because it'd be live and neutral, that's what trips under fault conditions. So doing this, there isn't a lot of difference, but obviously you will get a reading that there is a short. So the only other way to do it, but if there's any way that you guys would test this differently, other than removing each module and testing it, and linking it through to the lamp, let me know, because this is sort of the way it's done. It's just marked up on the test sheet. This is how it's done. Oh, I'm still holding that rather than the other way. So hope it's been some help. Let me know if there's any more of this I could do, because I've got the rig, I've got the testers, I've got loads of stuff that I can blow up or break. 
don't mind buying a few things if it's going to make a good video for you guys and we can all learn something. So hit the subscribe button if you haven't. I'm absolutely rocketing in subs at the moment. My goal by the end of the year is 100k. I'd love to hit that on sub-wise, but uh, thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one.